future access to an abortion pill is in limbo this morning. Protests erupted across the country this weekend after a federal judge in Texas suspended the FDA approval of a commonly used pill. But then another federal judge in Washington state ruled that the pills could not be restricted in more than a dozen states. Nancy Cordes is following all this for us this morning. Nancy, good morning to you. Good morning, Vlad. Yes, these are uh, a couple of the most consequential legal decisions since Roe v. Wade was overturned last year. And it really leaves uh, millions of women around the country sort of in limbo, kind of confused, waiting to see what happens next. This could all end up right back at the Supreme Court. The president is vowing to fight the Texas ruling, and the Justice Department is seeking a stay. Hands off the abortion pill! Protests broke out this weekend over the abortion pill ruling that has the potential to affect not just women in Texas, but women across the country. This is going to create utter chaos, utter disruption of, of women's lives. A conservative federal judge in Texas ruled Friday that the FDA improperly approved the abortion pill Mifepristone 23 years ago, ignoring legitimate safety concerns about the drug. The order yesterday was all about uh, writing a wrong. Mifepristone is one of two approved pills that are used together to carry out more than half of legal abortions in this country. The FDA insists the drug is safe and that serious complications are rare. This ruling is in extreme abuse of power. Some lawmakers urged the Biden administration to resist enforcing the ruling. We know that the executive branch has an enforcement discretion, especially should, should. in light of a contradicting ruling coming out of Washington. Shortly after the Texas ruling, a Washington state judge blocked any changes to Mifepristone's availability in 17 states and the District of Columbia, as administration officials warned that the legal battle in Texas could have far-reaching implications. When you turn upside down the entire FDA approval process, you're not talking about just Mifepristone. You're talking about every kind of drug. Cases like this one ensure that abortion will remain a top issue in next year's elections. It helped to propel liberal judge Janet Protasiewicz to an 11-point win in a high-profile state Supreme Court race in Wisconsin just last week, sparking some debate among Republicans about exactly how far to go. We can win this issue at the ballot box if we show up with reasonable positions. If we have our head in the sand, we're going to lose. For now, many prescribers say they are going to continue to dispense mifepristone, and patients in states that restrict abortion can still get the drugs from abroad. Even if uh, ultimately this drug is blocked, it could take years before they are off the shelves, because that's how long it takes, Michael, for the FDA to change its regulations. Well, Nancy, we, we heard this in your piece, but some Democratic lawmakers are telling the White House to essentially ignore the ruling. Do they have the authority to do that? Not really. And what the White House says is that it'll fight this ruling in the courts. Uh, the Department of Justice is uh, obviously appealing the ruling. That's why it's possible that this all could end up back at the Supreme Court. Uh, beyond that, one of the things that's been frustrating for uh, allies of the White House is that the, the president and his and his aides continue to say there's just not that much that they can do uh, at an administrative level. And that's why they argue that it's so important for their supporters to go to the polls if they care about this issue. And Nancy, I want to turn to some other White House news. Uh, the president spoke with NBC, he says he's planning on running for re-election but he isn't prepared to announce it yet. So I wanted to ask what you've heard and is there any indication of a timeline yet for his announcement? That's right, he was talking to noted White House correspondent Al Roker out on the uh, uh, <laughs> South Lawn of the White House in preparation for the White House Easter egg roll today. Uh, Al did get him to go farther than he has in public, certainly recently, about his plans for re-election. He says he is planning to run, he just hasn't announced it yet. Uh, and that uh, uh, is likely something that, uh, that ears all across uh, Washington perked up at when they heard it, because there has been some question about why it is that he's waiting so long to announce his bid for re-election. Could it be that he's having second thoughts? Uh, is it possible that perhaps some other Democrat might have to step up uh, and run and not have that much time to prepare? Uh, but uh, at least this morning here at the White House, the president is saying, yes, actually, he does plan to to run. He just hasn't made it official yet. Well, in the meantime, tomorrow we know the president travels to Ireland and Northern Ireland. What's the purpose of that trip? 
Uh, it's really twofold, Michael. Uh, first and foremost, he's going there to commemorate the 25th anniversary of the Good Friday Accords, which uh, brought to an end decades of, of, of strife and fighting in Northern Ireland. Uh, but he's also going there on something of a personal journey. Uh, the president talks a lot about his Irish heritage. He's going to be visiting with uh, family members in Ireland. He's going to be going to some uh, places that have special significance to his family, uh, visiting, for instance, a cathedral that his great, great, great grandfather helped to build. Uh, long, long ago. Uh, he was a bricklayer. Uh, and he's also going to be talking to some genealogists there about his family tree. So it's a professional trip and a personal trip as well. Nancy Cordes at the White House. Thank you. You're welcome.